as everybody knows very well now, <laughs> I don't even know why I keep saying it. I'm Nate Angel from Hypothesis, and I am really um, honored to be able to moderate this panel discussion on social annotation in world languages. And it's a really complex topic. So we just have a couple of panels here. We're hopefully going to be able to dive in pretty deep, um, uh, is what I'm hoping at least. And um, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But I wanted to just pause for a moment and have us all take a deep breath. Ooh, I don't know how much of this um, conference you've been participating in, both uh, my, my fellow panelists here and um, everyone who's in the session participating. But this is day four now. And I think when we get involved in these things, sometimes we don't take a pause and just relax for a minute and just bask in the moment. So we, ha we have an hour and a half here. So I think we can just take a moment to just um, recognize where we are and focus in, take a deep breath, and then maybe move forward with a little bit of um, calmness and attention. So I am super, um, super honored to have both of these folks here. Um, uh, I'm really excited uh, to have uh, Rosario Rojel Salazar here, who um, I haven't had a chance to collaborate with much yet, but I've been desperate to do so ever since I got wind of all the things that she's been doing um, uh, in Mexico. Um, and so I'll, I'll have her introduce herself a little bit more in depth um, in a second. But I also really want to um, uh, offer a very big honored welcome to Federico Pianzola, who is joining us. Um, and I'm not actually sure where you are, if you're in Italy right now. <laughs> Is that true? Yes, I am. Okay, um, because uh, I know that you work uh, internationally in a lot of different contexts. And these two fine folks um, have been working with social annotation using languages other than English, world languages, uh, that we might say, and um, in really interesting and creative ways. And we're going to delve into that um, really deeply. But before we get started in their presentations, let me just give each one of them a chance to introduce themselves and give a little bit of context about um, where they're calling from and what their sort of main set of practices is um, in education. So I'll start with you, Rosario. I'm really happy uh, and honored to be here sharing with you some of my experiences using social annotation with my students here in Mexico and in Ecuador uh, in Spanish. And um, I'm a professor of the uh, Universidad Autónoma del Estado de México here in Mexico, and I'm an in, uh, invited professor in Ecuador in la Universidad de Cuenca in Ecuador. And, um, um, besides that, I, I am related with topics of um, open science, open access, and the digital humanities. Then I don't know if Federico is going to present himself, or I'm going. Yeah, to yeah. Why don't we, let's let's hear from okay. Federico first? And um, I really I'm I, I'll apologize in advance that we're going to hold this conversation in English, which is maybe uh, strange to do. But <laughs> since we're going to be crossing a lot of different language boundaries, no, 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 okay. no, no, no. Don't worry. I hope you could understand my my. Oh. Absolutely perfect. English, okay. <laughs> Absolutely perfectly. I know it's better than my Spanish, although I do, okay. <laughs> I do speak a little bit. Um, so Federico, if I could ask you to do the same sort of thing and yes, give us some and context. Thank you yourself. for having me. Thank you for the invitation. It's it's an honor and a pleasure. I've been learning a lot in these past days, and so as you said briefly, I'm from Milan, Italy, but I'm also working at in Seoul, South Korea, at Sogang University, and I'm currently doing a project comparing. Um, the relationship bet uh, between um, Korean young people and Italian young people with technology in relation to how they read literature and especially how they read the fiction. And so I've been exploring how they deal with um, the, the phenomenon that we call digital social reading more broadly. So not, not just including social annotation, but also posting reviews or using Instagram, like with the phenomenon called Bookstagram or reviews on, on YouTube. So many different kind of ways of using social media and digital media to read and to talk about literature. That's so great. And, and certainly we don't need to just focus on annotation here. We can talk about all the different kind of social learning and digital reading things that are going on, social reading, all those words mixed together in different ways. And it's so great, too, that both of you um, cross so many different boundaries, not only um, in languages, but also international boundaries, both working in, in at least two different countries, right? Um, and maybe more. So um, I, I welcome you uh, 
on that level. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe that um, Rosario at least has a little bit of a, a formal kickoff that she wants to do for her piece. And so, um, and Federico, I'll just check with you too. Did you also have a, something a little more formal? Okay, great. So let's, let's hear from Rosario first. Then we'll hear from Federico, and then we'll move into the discussion mode after that and get involved with um, the audience as well, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to step back here and meet myself and give you the stage, Rosario. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to share my screen. Now, I I'm going to talk about this uh, social annotation with word languages. Uh, particularly, I'm going to talk about my experience using a um, uh, hypothesis here in Mexico and um, a little bit in Ecuador. Okay, then, um, um, okay, this is the, the, the topics that I'm going to talk about. The experience before the COVID-19 in Mexico and Ecuador, and then some uh, things related with the, this useful uh, tool during pandemic. It was crazy, and then the resources and tools that we have been using and uh, sharing social annotation with colleagues all over Latin America. And uh, uh, I'm going to share with you some voices of uh, my students. Okay, first of all, okay, uh, I started to use um, to, to use um, uh, hypothesis for social annotation even before the, the pandemic started. <laughs> I was happy and I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, in the case of Mexico, uh, I just started to work with pre-graduate social sciences students from uh, political science, sociology, and communication in a course uh, related with qualitative methodology. Uh, the average uh, of the students uh, uh, were 19 up uh, 23 years old. At first, they were surprised you know, using this platform because uh, they, they are used to reading from photocopies. I don't know in your countries, but here in Mexico or in Latin America, it's really common to use photocopies to uh, for reading and, you know, it's so sad. Uh, but they easily solve the learning curve. Uh, I was so happy. And they were very enthusiastic read, uh, and they read more than usual and share with other, and I'm going to share with you some of their experiences and their voices uh, at the end of this, of this presentation. But in opposite, in the case of Ecuador, as I, uh, I told you, I'm a, a professor there in a, in a master's degree on uh, urban planning in a methodology course, too. And they are a little bit older, no? Uh, between, um, I don't know, 27 and 40 years old. Uh, in a face-to-face -face course, uh, the use of the tool implied a lot of challenges, both due to the digital skills of the students and the platform in English. Mm, and they made a great effort, but their annotation were very few, and I think they were like uh, not really enthusiastic. No, I don't know if uh, if uh, that was because of the because they were older than the other students, or because I really don't know. But okay, they they tried to do that. I don't know if I try to compare the case uh, before the pandemic between Mexico and Ecuador in a face-to-face -face course. In the case of Mexico, they were very young students related to digital apps. Then uh, for them, is uh, because they are very young, it's not a very new thing uh, to use a digital app. They consider the use of social annotation as a game and uh, have fun with that. Mm, and they study um, disciplines involved uh, in the development of communication and argument, uh, argumentation skills. So social annotations are really interesting for them. In the opposite case, uh, from Ecuador students, uh, uh, they were middle-aged uh, students, most of them parents, almost all working with, uh, in the public service in Ecuador, which little time to learn digital skills. The use of social annotation is an activity that they could skip. <laughs> they are used to reading on paper and do not have much interest uh, interested in changing. Their professional profile is um, uh, or where a uh, geography, architecture, engineering, uh, they do not consider the development of communication skills as something central in their training. Probably because of that, the difference, uh, I don't know, in the experience, uh, are, or it could be explained. Now, 
What happened before the pandemic started? <laughs> it was, um, I don't know, a really big, big challenge. In the case of Ecuador, um, the, the high levels of contagion in, in, the, in the very beginning of uh, 2020 and the lack of organization at the university forced the suspension of activities for a couple of months. Uh, uh, upon the return from activities, some students uh, left school. And uh, uh, we discontinued the use of almost all digital tools but video conferences. But in the case of Mexico, it was different. The school semester had uh, uh, already started uh, uh, when the pandemic, when the, the uh, uh, lockdown started. And we had a couple of weeks working when uh, lockdown began. Uh, we had started using a hypothesis, so the switch to emergency remote learning was easier. However, some emergency action had to be taken. I mean, uh, we needed to uh, prepare, or in this case, I need, uh, I prepare different tutorials of the use of, uh, for the use of hypothesis and other tools. Uh, uh, we opening a public group in Sotero with all the course uh, readings, all available in, op in open access because the libraries were closed. Then uh, 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 we needed to take care that they, they, they could access uh, to all the all the bi bibliography, and uh, we share experiences of social annotation on Twitter and TikTok. I, I don't use TikTok, but the students they wanted to to, to share in TikTok, and okay, it was okay for me. And uh, they try to tag the authors. Very few of them uh, answered, but it was it was funny, and. Um, uh, we made they made some videos about the learning experiences and post in the blog that we have for the course and it was a very very interesting uh, um, experience. Uh, uh, which one was the, the the resources and tools that we use? First of all, we we um, in order to integrate the bibliography in one place, uh, we used Sotero. Uh, because this was an easy way to share and access the, the, the bibliography. This group is open if you want to, uh, uh, I don't know, to visit it. Uh, the link is, is over there. Uh, and, you know, the students didn't use any, 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 any uh, a, a bibliographic um, uh, uh, reference. Uh, uh, then it was a little bit uh, difficult, but at the end uh, they learned. Uh, they keep, uh, the key importance of open access was... Um, I don't know, re relevant, because, um, uh, and, and I needed to adjust the syllabus because not all the text can be unnoted. You know, some of them, <laughs> they were not available to, or, or, or suitable to, to, to make the annotations uh, with Sotero, or other uh, it was only on paper, or there were some, uh, some, pap some, some um, bibliographies that uh, were not uh, available or no have the rights to share. Then we we uh, 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 adjust the, all the syllabus and is is over there. Then the students go to Sotero and identify which one is um, the bibliography, and they open this bibliography. All of them in in open access, and then they open or uh, the the hypothesis um, uh, extension and start to 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 make the the, the annotations, the social annotations. Uh, uh, the other thing that I started to do was um, some resources to reduce the learning curve, some tutorials. I made a lot of tutorials. Some of them are, are the ones that are here. Uh, we had little time to adapt the face-to-face -face course to a virtual one. The, the tutorials in Spanish were decisive for the, for the students. Um, and I upload the, all the tutorials in, to YouTube. Why? <laughs> this is a tricky answer. Uh, I made a, a survey between uh, among my students, and I identified that 40% of these course students access their classes online via their own cell phone data. Uh, in Mexico, I don't know in other countries, but the, the use of social networks, including YouTube, does not consume their cell phone data. Because of that, this was important for, for, for them. I don't know, these resources uh, uh, were in, um, in um, YouTube. Okay, then after that, I made an hypothesis tutorial. Here is the link of uh, uh, the, that, this, uh, this tutorial because uh, at the very beginning, the, the students had some uh, uh, 
um, uh, doubts or questions about the use, but I was not with them. Then, because of that, I started to do this this tutorial, and and then this this uh, hypothesis tutorial in Spanish was seen by teachers and students from all Latin American countries. That was really surprised because I, I, I didn't expect this success. No, then due to the interest. Eh, de, de UNAM, de Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, which is not my university, this is the biggest university in Mexico, uh, asked me to organize a workshop in Spanish eh, to share the use of this tool. Remember that we was in the in the middle of the pandemic and the, all the professors and the students were, were looking for tools or some helping, uh, um, I don't know, uh, um, tools uh, 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 in order to continue with the classes. Then we... Um, we started the social annotation and, and, and we opened, of course, this, uh, this group. Uh, and the social annotation allowed to fill the gaps of not being able to, to talk face to face due to the lockdown. Then it, it was really interesting because uh, I was using um, a hypothesis before the pandemic and after that. And I identified that after the pandemic for the students were more important, uh, uh, the social annotation, because they could share things that they couldn't share because they were isolated in their own houses. The students committed themselves to using the tool and there were some of them that tried to get other teachers uh, to use it, but um, that was not possible due to the digital skills gap among teachers. That was so, so sad. Then, uh, when we started to share this annotation uh, with colleagues uh, all over America, it uh, was thanks to the UNAM uh, um, uh, organi organization of this work workshop. Uh, was It was held in the, I think, in August of uh, 2020. The workshop, uh, as I told you, was organized by the uh, UNAM library. More than a thousand people attend the workshop. I was really surprised. I, I, I couldn't... Uh, imagine all the interest that, that these kind of uh, tools could be, I don't know, could be have. The, uh, uh, there were teachers and students, most uh, professors and, and students from Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, Ecuador, Costa Rica, Cuba, Venezuela, Guatemala, y España. <laughs> no? Wow. It was crazy. And all of them at the end of this uh, this uh, workshop agree uh, on the need of, uh, of resources in Spanish to facilitate the use of this kind of uh, of, uh, of tools. Then I want to share with you some of the um, voices of students. I, I I don't want to take a lot of time, but if you want, I can I, I can share with you. I don't know the links, but. Uh, they they post some um, um, some they add some post in the blog that we have for the class. Uh, this is a couple of them. The, the first of one called "Hypothesis: A Revolutionary Way of Doing Reading Checks," and the other one uh, is um, the unbearable likeness of being a student online. And they, in, in, in this case, they share in their own world words the experience of use this um, this tool. Uh, this is a really, really uh, a, a fun. If you want, I can I can show you some of the videos that they made. Uh, it was really fun. I don't know, um, uh, making some songs or poetry or joking about the use of hypotheses and, and the way in which they they really appreciate this. They they are a lot of videos and are really really fun. And this is some of the. Um, experiences that I can I can share with you of some of the students. There are a lot of them, but then I, I want to share some of them. In this case, Alan Colin, he is a student of communication. He said, he, he, he's saying, uh, using hypotheses forced me to read more carefully, to think about how the ideas are related to other topics, to add questions about the text and to think of examples to share in the comments without a doubt. This exercise requires more concentration and time than doing a summary or just reading a PDF. <laughs> and he continues, uh, um, in other classes, we do readings, uh, but there are not many ways to ask questions about a specific point or to know what the classmates think. When we use hypotheses, all of this could be done before class, although it also requires a lot of uh, commitment and punctuality on the part of students. Also, since we use hypotheses in class, I have uh, uh, seen that they have used 
in events and in conferences beyond the university. Uh, I study art, so it was good to have a training in using it first with the group before using it in more spaces and public. And he's another student. Uh, he says that using hypotheses help him uh, to do more specific analysis and various perspectives of, of, of digital content that not only help him or them no, uh, consider perspectives uh, from, the, from the academic community. I think it's a very practical opportunity for a practical dissemination of knowledge and opinions of daily content that we read uh, without having to separate ourselves from the text to follow the comments and the highlight of ideas. Mara, she is a student of political science uh, sciences and he, she says, we made a group with a hypothesis and wrote some comments in a text so we could read what other colleagues uh, had written. That gave us an idea of what caught their attention uh, in the reading. The same thing did not always catch our attention. Uh, there were also occasion, uh, 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 occasions uh, when we um, only make up paraphrases of uh, what the author was proposing. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, that did not speak of our critical capacity, but of different interpretation of a single message. It was interesting to look at a single object from perspectives of your college from other careers. And Andrea, she's, she's studying uh, communication too. She says, I, uh, using a hypothesis has been of great help for academic matters. I can identify perceptions and points of view of other people who have consulted the same pages or documents. Thanks to this, uh, uh, thanks to this practice, I had new recommendations for articles that they complement my research and work. And, and, and she's continuing. I don't want to, to take a lot of time. Uh, uh, Veronica, she's a professor, and, and, and she says, discovering hypothesis as a tool for a web annotation was to move from pencil to paper, no? uh, to a layer of the web that allowed me to connect with my students, making more efficient the time invested uh, in reading and reviewing the text. And there are a lot of uh, comments related with this. If, if you want, I can share with you the links of the, the videos. Oh, the, okay, the videos are in Spanish, then it's, it's, it's a shame, but they, they are really, really fun. And I think, um, I don't know, it was a great experience. And um, um, is that all in my, in, in my part? I don't know. I, if, you want, if you want to continue talking or sharing other experiences, I'm here. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Rosario. That was fantastic. Um, and uh, I think um, we'll let's hold on to some of the ideas and thoughts that came out of what you were talking about. I think some people would really like to see some of those examples that you brought forward. Let's hear from Federico first, and then we'll, we'll we have plenty of time. And so we can come back to some further discussion and delve into some of those examples. If that's OK. Okay, thank you, Rosario. It was amazing to hear about your research, and I want to have all those links and check what you did with your students. I will share my presentation now. So, uh, my goal is more related to reading fiction, as I said. So, it's a kind, of, it's a very different, different kind of text. Uh, it's not necessarily related to an educational activity. So, people can read fiction whenever they want, and the challenge here is to how to bring social annotation into the, the reading of fiction and, and is this helpful? So what I try to do is that to create um, a reading experience which looks like uh, uh, reading an ebook or even more a printed book. So I created this um, digital book using um, RStudio and the book down package uh, which allows me to create this um, book format with the, you, know, you see the font as a serifs and there is a, a table of content on the side that you can hide and can be adapted to, to various needs also for accessibility, like changing contrast, increasing the font. And it's a responsive kind of text. So it can adapt it to different kinds of screens, so mobile phones, tablets, and, and laptops. So I wanted to really help students being able to read uh, whichever format that they wanted and with whichever devices they prefer. I did this study in comparing um, how people, how students, uh, university students, uh, read the read fiction and in Italy and, and South Korea, and the size of the classes was very different. In, in Italy, it was an undergraduate course, uh, so uh, we had a lot more students. Uh, you see, 111 who participated. While in South Korea, uh, it was a master course, very specific, so we had just uh, 
uh, 17 students. But it was a quite uh, successful. I think I, there was a lot of conversation, even though they didn't have almost any experience using social annotation tools or digital social reading tools more, more broadly. So they, they don't read fan fiction modes. They don't post uh, reviews online. Their use of, uh, of digital and social media for reading was uh, really low. And to measure and to, um, to see how, how they differ in the use of, of social annotation uh, for, for reading fiction, I used uh, uh, both the qualitative methods analyzing the comments, and, but I, I also used quantitative methods. So I used questionnaires to measure their, uh, their experience. And I have the data only for, for, for Italy at, at the moment. Um, so I use the social orientation scale developed by uh, René Calier and, and, and others, uh, which has two dimensions, perceived learning and the sense of community. And the, so the range is uh, one, from one to five, and then the question is like, uh, how much do you agree with, the, with this statement? And the, the mean was quite high, it was a four out of five. So even though they, did, they, don't have any, they didn't have any experience with the social annotation or very low experience with social annotation, they thought that using social annotation, annotating fiction, helped them learn more about how to interpret the text and how to, uh, to engage with the, with the text and also how to uh, empathize with the characters we will see in a minute. And then the second dimension is the sense of community. So again, the scale is from one to five. And the mean was a three, so a bit more than, uh, than the, the mid uh, value. So again, the, the sense of community was something that emerged during this experience. So the fact that students were able to talk to each other made them feel more uh, part of the classroom. And the, another dimension that, that I measured was that the factor called the intrinsic motivation. So how much the people were interested in enjoying the activity according to their personal attitude and their in, in individual interest in using this, this kind of tool. And again, here in the range of uh, from one to seven, which was allowed for, for the replies, the, the mean value was 4.28, so quite a, a above the, the mid value. So it was, it was a confirmation that this kind of tool can be successfully used for uh, motivating people to, uh, to engage in a different way with, with fiction. So I think to conclude, I think it's a, it's a possibility which is a, a also available not only in English speaking countries, but also in, in Italy and, and in South Korea, even though the context of uh, uh, the educational context is very different because in Italy, we have uh, like policies which are very liberal and we're pushing a lot towards the adoption of new technologies. Whereas on the other side, <clears throat> in South Korea, education is, is more conservative, it has a more conservative approach, but at the same time, they have maybe the most developed ecosystem of digital services and digital infrastructure. So they have a, they, they do everything with mobile phones at the moment. You really can do cover all the aspects of your life uh, with mobile phones and even different kind of entertainment. Web tunes are, uh, which are a web-based form of comics are very popular in, in South Korea, but Still, annotating socially text, it's not a practice that is so common at the moment. So I think there is a space to, to introduce this, this technology and this kind of practices more broadly, even within educational context. And yeah, I also ask the students how uh, they would like to reuse or recommend this tool. And you see that here it's the even higher. They had such a good experience of using this tool that out of seven, uh, which is, was the maximum, 5.6 5 uh, is the, me the mean value that um, people scored uh, on this scale. So they really would like to use these kind of tools in other courses, and they're also willing to recommend this to, to friends and other classmates. Coming to the kind of annotations that I found uh, to this text, they're really wide, and I didn't find any particular difference uh, between Italian and South Korean students. So there were intertextual references, not only to other books, but also to other media, so films and uh, songs or other cultural references. Uh, there were references to author's biography to interpret some parts of the text, maybe, but also more direct response uh, to the behaviors of characters. And 
Uh, maybe you're aware that, 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 that some researchers, uh, I think um, Thompson, Poole, they developed uh, this um, model of three kinds of affordances of social annotation, like social, literary, and linguistic kind of annotations. And I found all of them in, in various ways, in both in Italy and in South Korea. So interpretation of literary details, linguistic reflection about the meaning of certain words, maybe comments about the reader's activation, both emotionally, imaginatively, and as a kind of reflection on the text itself. But also actualization, uh, we use them text from the beginning, middle of 21st century, both in Italy and South Korea. So readers actualized the content, which were of the stories set maybe uh, 100 year, um, 50, 60 years before uh, the actual era. And then again, interpretation of character behaviors, but also aesthetic evaluation of what they were reading. And also more on, on the social aspect, there were requests for help with interpretation of the text. So again, peer, lear peer learning is quite a valuable affordance of social annotation. And yeah, generalization from narrative episodes. So starting from something lived by a character, they were trying to extract or abstract um, some more general truth that could, could be applied to their own lives. And, but also activation of previous knowledge that is needed to interpret uh, some literary devices, some conventions of literary genres, for instance, or even um, some behaviors that characters have so that readers had to resort to their previous knowledge to understand what it means to behave in a certain way. Uh, I think that's it for, for now. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I just uh, want to drop a note here about a, a book that I, I, it's available for open peer review at the moment on the MIT Press platform. Uh, so where I summarize the, the work that I've been doing in the previous years, and it's in open access now and can be annotated by all of you. And I really look forward to learn more uh, from your own uh, practices with social annotation so that I can improve this book and may publish it eventually. Thank you very much. That was so that was so interesting, uh, Federica. And what I really love here is the, the difference between um, the practices that Rosario was talking about and what you're doing. Um, but, but different and complementary and some interesting things coming out of them. Um, and I'll just um, ask, is the book that the book that you just gave us the link to, is that published in the same platform that uh, Ramey and Antero published annotation in? It is. It is. It's in the same platform, yes. I got the inspiration from them. I was already thinking about publishing an open access and doing open peer review, and I found the perfect tool when I, start, when I read their books. Great. Yeah, and I'll just put out to folks, that's uh, the pub pub. It's a publishing platform called PubPub, which is yeah. sort of funny, right? And um, it has a its own built-in annotation technology that isn't the same thing as Hypothesis, just in case anybody goes there and is like, wait, it looks different. Um, uh, I did a little bit of uh, peer review on Ramey and Antero's annotation book and found it to be a really rewarding experience. So definitely encourage folks to um, to also do that with with Federico's work. So I have a I want to start things off first by asking what I think might be a kind of basic question. And uh, first, thank you so much for giving us all the context of what you guys have, have been working on because now like I could I really fully understand I think the well not fully, but I understand more about the background of what you've been working on. But let me let me ask this first and I'll and maybe start with Rosario. So when when we're talking about annotating and and social annotating and reading, especially in different languages, there's a whole bunch of different possibilities, right? There's the text itself and the language that it may be in. It could be in more than one language, right? And then there's the annotation space and annotations themselves have the possibility of being multilingual, <laughs> right? And so I'm kind of curious, um, and, and I'll, I'll have Federico follow up on this too, but when you in your annotation work with the students and i realized that it crossed many different boundaries so there may be many different examples here but were you primarily annotating works in say spanish or some other single language and then annotating also in that shared language or was there multilingual reading and annotation going on mm -hmm. um it's a multilingual reading and annotation in the case of um the the 
Okay, it depends. In the course that I give here in Mexico, which is uh, related with methodology, qualitative methodology, the students, uh, they are very young and they are so enthusiastic and um, they, they could read uh, English, but it's a little bit more difficult to, 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 to write or speak. Then because of that, I can share with them some uh, um, a text in English, for example, for the, they are any any problem but they they made or uh, they make all the annotations in spanish you know <laughs> then it is is a little bit crazy but uh, for them it's easier some of them mainly uh, those who i don't know who has uh, some skills in in english probably they can make the the, the annotations in in english but i i leave them i don't know as they prefer if they want to annotate in Spanish, it is okay for me, or if uh, if they make the annotations in, in English, it's, it's okay for me too. The thing that is crazy, and they they are they they were surprised because they thought that probably the the authors uh, who they were reading no would be interested in knowing the the annotations. And they were very, very few authors who, I don't know, who, who, who give a response or a feedback. And I think that that was because all, uh, or, or uh, they, uh, the authors of the text, they don't have Twitter, for example, then it was really difficult to find them, or they don't understand <laughs> what, what the social annotation is. <laughs> then, uh, but there were a couple of uh, of authors who answered, and they were so happy, really, really happy, because they feel they felt I don't know important, and uh, and yeah, so it, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, and so it really sounds like you've got a uh, the real <laughs> the the, most, the multilingual juice flowing, for sure. Um, and so uh. The, were the only two languages involved really just Spanish and English then on one side or the other, or were there any, were there any indigenous languages at work? No. 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 Okay. Mm -mm. I'm always I'm always digging for other like little nuggets too. I was really trying hard to um, have another educator here mm -hmm. who who worked in um, some non Latin alphabet languages, but actually Federico may be able to weigh but, in on that. But for example, excuse me that I interrupt, sure. you, but in the case of Ecuador, for example, it was diff di different. The, the students is is much more difficult for them to read in English. Hmm. I don't know, probably because they are uh, they are they were older or they are not habituated to. But all the text that I share with them uh, uh, was in, Sp in, in Spanish, and some of them made the annotations in Quichua, which is oh. the traditional language of um, of Ecuador. Yes. Wow! And I didn't understand, of course, anything because I, I would I would love to see that Quichua. Yes. <laughs> I've never seen an annotation. Yes, in, in I, I'm going to look for that. And then. okay, yeah, I would love to see one of those. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. Does it does and does that use the Latin alphabet? No, no, no. It's the same. Yeah, it's yeah, same. same one. Okay, all right. Okay, uh -huh. so so same kind of question to you then, Federico. Um, I'm wondering, uh, you know, this multilingual aspect. So the text you were reading and the the the, the language of the annotations themselves. Was there a mix there, or uh, what? What languages were going on? No, in Italy we have been annotating Italian literature text uh, with in in Italian. In South Korea, it was um, an international program uh, taught in English. So even though th there is a lot, there are majority of the students are Korean. It's uh, all taught in English, and the texts that we are reading are also English texts. Even though a, a strong knowledge of Korean culture and Korean history is required to understand the text. So, of course, the elements of Korean culture emerges. Maybe there are some mixing of language of English and Korean. But students have to write the, their comments uh, in English. But they, they tend to also to practice their transliteration skills because they have to learn how to transliterate Korean into the, the Latin alphabet. And so they tend to use both uh, English, they tend to use English the transliteration of Korean into English and also some Korean words or sentences where they, when they cannot express themselves perfectly in, uh, into English. So there's an interesting mix there. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. And I was wondering uh, actually if, so there wasn't, was there any reading or annotating in Korean? No, for this class is no, because it's all yeah. taught in, in English. Right. I'm just curious if, 
um, because it, I believe you were using Hypothesis outside of an yes. LMS environment. Is that right? Do you do you know if any of your students went on to use it in other contexts? Um, I asked them about the intention to to use it or the previous use of digital annotation tools, but I'm not sure if they're using Hypothesis or some other tools. But it was. Um, and as I said before, Korean education is very conservative. So there is very little innovation in terms of uh, digital technologies introduced there, apart from video lecture and uh, you just listen to the professor talking. That, that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I was really, uh, I'm, I'm very interested in the idea that uh, annotation gives this annotation layer, if you will, introduces a new space on text, right, where there can be a multilingual interchange, mm -hmm. um, which I just I find that to be a, like a fascinating area that we probably haven't really fully explored yet, although you you all are both on the forefront of it. I did notice that um, Diego is sharing um, some interesting statistics that he's compiled about about the use of Spanish in particular um, online. And uh, yeah, that's that was actually my motivation for wanting to learn Spanish too, is because it is so widely used. Um, so one thing that I uh, I always think is a little bit interesting to maybe try on these panels, if you guys have questions for each other. So, um, Federico, I don't know as you were listening to what Rosario was saying, did, did it did any questions come up for you that you wanted to post her? Yes, I mean I was. I mean the um, you're using this for I saw in the slides for uh, teaching quantitative methods, right? Qualitative mm -hmm. methods in so it's yeah, a social okay. science uh, class. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you know? Uh, yeah, one if they they the students that were using social annotation also for other classes, or if they adopted then this tool for their personal use. Hmm. No, that's a shame. They they when they discover no quote <laughs> no this um this tool, um they they were at the, at the beginning a little bit surprised. And then they love no mainly during during the, the pandemic because all the, the sharing that this um make possible. But at the end, some of them told me that uh, they they wanted that other professors use this kind of tools or another kind of tools, but all the teacher, all, all the professors were, mm, I don't know, mm, uh, they, they didn't want to. And I assume that this, uh, because of this uh, digital uh, skills gap, uh, I suppose, it's, it's, it's a problem related with the professors, you know, the age of the professors, all of them are really old, <laughs> older than me, no? and uh, they are not really, I don't know, um, uh, related with these uh, digital topics. And and uh, most of the students during the pandemic have been so, um, um, I don't know, disappointed because the, the, the virtual classes has been so boring, so bored, so bored, no? Because the professor is talking like this during two hours, no, and, like, uh -huh. and they didn't use any kind of, um, I don't know, tools or things or, or, or got whatever. And even the students asked them to use it, and they were, uh, no, uh, um, um, they, they, they rejected. And the university didn't, uh, I don't know, uh, push the professors to do that because um, it's, 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 it's difficult, it's not, um, I don't know. It's not in the culture, I think. And I, I suppose, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I suppose that is related with the age of the professors, but I don't know if it's that. Oh. Mm -hmm. But actually, I had a, there's a, there, there, there is a very, there was now a very active association, no profit association in Italy doing mm, annotations of, of literary texts uh, on Twitter. So they normally did, they had a shared calendar in, in when, defining the time when they were reading chapters of, of books and then mm -hmm. they were tweeting comments about the books and they were able to involve um involve some very active teachers even uh, like uh, over 50 or 60 years old uh, so in this case i think it was not a matter of age but in, uh, it, the role of the teachers was very important in having students be motivated in, in writing comments and sharing their thoughts about what they were reading and uh, many people have already stressed this in, in the previous days in other talks, but the role of educators is, is really important for the introduction of, of these kind of tools. And yes. as you, you were saying, Rosario, the fact that there are no tutorials available in Spanish that you had to create them to 
to make uh, mm-hmm. students learn how to do that. It's it's really a shame, and we we should do in, should we should do more to make these tools available in other contexts yes. in other countries. Yes, that that was surprising to me because I made that tutorial that is in YouTube for my students. You know thinking of them in order to help them. And then when I started to see that was a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, views and there were a lot of people uh, all over uh, Latin America, uh, I don't know, asking me about the tool. And I said, no, I only use it. I don't know who are them. <laughs> and uh, it was it was crazy. And with that, uh, with that tutorial, I realized that there, there is a lack of uh, resources in other languages, mainly I don't know, I'm thinking in Spanish too, because, you know, there are a lot of people in a lot of countries that are speaking in Spanish. I think uh, I, I was reading uh, the, the, um, the collaboration of um, Diego de la Era, and he says that is the second uh, more uh, spoken language in the world. Then I think that, of course, English, of course, English, but I think that probably if uh, um, I don't know, we, we try to make an effort or to collaborate in order to, to produce much more resources in Spanish. Could be, could be good. And I think that another, prob- uh, I don't know, another reason, no? I don't know, I think that could be related that other, uh, 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 other professors don't use these kind of tools. It's not only, okay, probably the age or no, I don't know, uh, but it's because of the kind of text that uh, they are using in their syllabus. Because there are a lot of professors, at least here in Latin America, that they still use books in, I don't know, paper, but not more, or photocopies, as I told you, no? Old photocopies. Then the photocopies are, I don't know, scanned, you know? And it's really difficult to, to, to make the annotations of that in, in that kind of uh, text. No? It's a real problem. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and maybe we could circle back to this idea of, um, you know, making making hypothesis itself or social annotation in general more available in different languages because it's a thorny one. And I apologize because hypothesis hasn't done everything that we can do. Certainly not as much as Rosario has done for Spanish. Um, so single handedly, she's uh, she's done great work there. I, I want to throw that back. Unless Federico, you had something else you wanted to follow up, and I was going to do it the other way and see if Rosario had a question for you. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if, if you did, Rosario, about something about Federico's work. Mm-hmm. No, I'm I'm really impressed with this. Um, I don't know uh, cultural uh, change because um, I don't know Italian is almost uh, similar. No, <laughs> at least when you speak in Italian, I almost understand something. But in Korean, or I don't know which is the language that they, they are talking there. In in English, in English way, you can. Um, I don't know, solve the, the problem of the alphabet that they use uh, for annotations, for example, if they are annotations in Korean or I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's supported uh, by hypothesis, no problem. Ah, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, I never tried, yeah. of course. <laughs> okay. Oh. Mm. No, the big the big difference that I, that I faced in all the research that I'm doing, because I'm also studying and researching uh, annotations occurring more in a more natural context, let's say. So, on apps uh, like Wattpad and uh, and other fan fiction websites where people are writing comments on on stories because they like to read them and they do not they don't have teachers telling them that oh read this and and, and annotate it. Uh, the main main difference that that I found is that in the tone and in the attitude that, that people have. Like yes. on apps like Wattpad, for instance, they're more more casual. Of course, the age is also uh, is also also matters because uh, um, Wattpad users are much younger. Are, um, I think the average was a I did a yeah it was a just above a twenty years old of age, um, but the majority of them is also teenagers. So it, it's really they have more casual attitude. It's more like a really we are on a social medium we share with our thoughts more freely we even write we use emojis a lot we mm-hmm. write direct emotional responses to something mm-hmm. happening in, in the text whereas mm-hmm. once you start using these tools inside a class mm-hmm. everything changes it's the attitude of the students changes and it's more like i have to show the teacher that i know something i have to show my peers that 
I learned something and I know something about this text and I have to look smart when I write out my comments. <laughs> Uh -huh. so that's, that's a big difference that I that I've seen. Mm -hmm. oh, but in, in, in that case is similar to, to Mexican students because they say in the in the different videos that I can share with you if you want I can link I can, I can share the yes. link with you here uh, but they say that with this kind of tools uh, or with the social annotation they needed to read carefully. And they needed to, I don't know, take, 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 take their time in order to make an annotation because they know that all the classmates are going to read it. <laughs> no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Which, oh. might, which might be an excellent way, I think. I mean, the, the social aspect of, of digital reading might be the key, I think, for the promotion of reading in, and especially on what's sometimes called a deep reading, reflective reading, critical reading, mm -hmm. yes, which is in decline because of media, different kind of yes. digital media entertainment, and and also because of the medium itself. The, the technology of reading on screen has been uh, found it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, detrimental for uh, like the retention of information or for uh, the ability to understand deeply uh, the text. I think the social aspect can bring this component of uh, reflecting together into the game again. Mm -hmm. See, yes, I think it's uh, in 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 any case. Uh, I don't know the cultural um, context must be different, no? Because I don't know. I I imagine that uh, as you said during your presentation, uh, the uh, I don't know Korean society is a little bit more conservative. I don't know if, uh, and probably they don't share a lot. Uh, the, the, I don't know their thinkings or no. This this is a challenge or because they are young. It's not a big. No, challenge. they they use a lot. Um, they're very social. They're yeah, they're very conservative, but also very social. They use uh, yeah. um, okay. social media in a lot of different ways uh, to share and to, to talk to each other a lot about any kind of topic. Uh, but they have a very different ecosystem, digital ecosystem. They have uh, other uh, tech companies. They don't use Google. They don't use Facebook much. They use a lot of Naver and Kakao, which are the two big tech giants there. But I think South Korea is a, has become now a, a huge player in the worldwide context related to digital social reading and social annotation. Because I don't know how many of you know this, but uh, Wattpad, which is the largest platform for uh, English language uh, annotation, has been acquired uh, a few months back by, um, by Naver, which is the Korean Google. And Naver also owns a platform which is the, the, the biggest platform for, for webtoons, which is a huge phenomenon in, in South Korea and also in Japan and, and China. And a few months later then, Kakao, which is the second big tech company in, in Korea, acquired three other uh, platforms. One is Reddish, and the, um, another one is uh, uh, Glows. So all platforms where you can read digitally and annotate the text. So now what we have that some of the biggest uh, uh, platforms in terms of social and digital reading are being owned by Korean companies. And it's, I think it's very interesting to see what the developments will be in the future. Well, that, that's really interesting context, Federico. I didn't know about all this uh, mergers and acquisitions. Yeah, and it's also interesting because Korean culture is very influential in all the in all Asia, especially Southeast Asia, but a lot also in in China and Japan for related to K-pop, and of course now with BTS, this is becoming very famous also in, in the Western world. And so the the and we are all watching Korean drama now on on Netflix. So the, the rise of, uh, uh, of the, the, the popularity of Korean entertainment together with, uh, with this merging of uh, ownership of reading platforms, I think we're going to see something very interesting. Great. Well, we have actually a question from the audience. Uh, finally, I was waiting for the audience to get involved. There's been some really interesting chat going back and forth, of course. Um, and so I'm going to put this one on stage. and. It could be that you, this is a little bit outside of your experience. I'm not sure, um, but we'll see. Um, because um, 
you know, this is about basically using uh, social annotation as a language teaching tool, right? To teach someone a language they don't know. And of course, I guess you both have experience in that because you're both working with students who are reading things that are not in their native language, but you're not, your goals haven't necessarily been to teach language, right? Yeah, it's not part of my research or, or my teaching, but I know there is very useful research out there. And you can find some some articles listed in the Zotero bibliography that uh, Remy Kalir is curating, and also in the one that I'm curating. And I will find the links and post them here in the chat. Great. Right, what about you, Rosario? Do you have thoughts no, on this? Same. I'm, I'm an attempt. I don't know. I'm not related with the teaching uh, of another language shows with native speakers. Right. Because I'm a methodology professor, you know. Then I really don't know, but I suppose that it could be useful, no? Useful just uh, in order for, for sharing because you know, even even I'm not a, um, um, uh, a language uh, or English professor here in Mexico. I can identify that the students, even if not my my, I don't know my my discipline, they started to. I don't know to 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 get uh, to to improve their skills in uh, uh, speaking English uh, when they are using uh, these these tools or they are uh, reading uh, uh, texts in, in in English and sometimes they ask me some uh, things related with the I don't know with the use of language for example and and the, I think uh, um, it's, it's related but if I, I I I don't know exactly because I'm not I'm Got just it. Methodology professor. <laughs> yeah. Just a humble methodology professor. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that's that's sort of in a way not the topic of this um, of this panel because that's like a whole other world, right? Of teaching someone a new language. Um, and I'll just point out that there was um, some really interesting um, presentations given not at the last I annotate, which was in 2019. Um, so we can find some links to the past presentations on that, um, particularly people using. Uh, social annotation and teaching French, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. And um, the, uh, one of the things that they were also doing was using annotation to embed non-linguistic uh, cues and reactions to texts in other languages. So for instance, um, they were asking students to do things like um, uh, uh, as they were reading through poetry in French, to give visual reactions to the text as opposed to textual reactions. So using images and videos as the annotation as opposed to text responses. So it then became, we can't really say non-linguistic, right? Because images are a language too, but it became not non-text linguistic, if that's a word, something like that. You know, I was curious, I know people were um, interested in um, in hearing a little bit more about your examples and i know rosario you posted a link to some stuff but i thought you might maybe even want to pick one or two and show them on on screen and why if you want to do that uh, while you're picking those out i thought i might ask federico um you had your students um reading fiction what fiction did they read what, what were the stories i in italy in italian uh, there was um we have made a selection by italo calvino so oh. you, some of them were more uh, um, short stories, all short stories. Some of them were related to his um, experience during the resistance uh, to the fascist, and some more science fiction kind of story. And in Korea, we used a selection of few, mostly historically based uh, short stories during the Japanese occupation and uh, also during the, um, the war with the North Korea. Uh, were this were the stories by Korean authors or yes, all by Korean authors that, which have been translated into English. I got it. So there's multiple layers of translation. Yes, here. interesting. Um, <laughs> it'd be interesting to go back and see how the annotations would anchor on a Korean version of the same text. Probably not at well, all. Well, actually, some students did. Some students, of course, they they were they are Korean natives, so they prefer to read in Korean because it's faster for them. So then they also there were a few comments related to the translation actually. Hmm. Yeah, to, as a as a tool to navigate translation, it could also be really interesting. Some of which is coming up in chat as well. So, Rosario, do you have a couple examples that you want to show off on screen? 
Okay, well, it's not too hard. Spanish. Of course, they are in Spanish, but if you want to, yes, I can share. And you can imagine what they are saying. You know? It's a very widely spoken language, so I'm not sure <laughs> there are many of us here who could probably speak some of it and understand. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you the videos because they are so uh, fun, and um, I don't know. I think you are. Um, Yes, watching them. Uh, yeah. Yes, I shared this this link. We'll see, we'll see how the sand goes through. Uh huh. Mi nombre es Amairani López Lara. That's good. Acabo de terminar mi primer clase en línea por hear? parte de la materia yes. de técnicas de investigación cualitativas marcos de aplicación. La verdad, yo estaba muy nerviosa al utilizar esta forma de aprender, ya que nunca lo había utilizado. Mm -hmm. She says that she was so nervous in using this tool because she has never using. Uh -huh. eh, la doctora nos brindó varias herramientas de las cuales nos íbamos a apoyar en la clase en línea y una de ellas es hipótesis. Creo que es una herramienta que de verdad te ayuda muchísimo tú como estudiante. Te quita del tradicional imprime el PDF o ve y saca copias. <laughs> She's talking about that. Uh, she says that hipótesis is so useful because uh, she, she don't need it to go to make a photocopy of the book, no? And it's the PDF already there and, and she can read it. Subraya y transcribe. Creo que es una line. manera más fácil de estar comunicado con otros compañeros, ya que, y no incluso compañeros, sino como muchas personas de todo el mundo. And she said that it's a very useful a way to be in touch with other uh, students. And let me show another one, okay? okay? Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Luis Colín. Hoy quisiera hablar un poco acerca de cómo estamos llevando la contingencia, eh, al menos en mi clase de técnicas cualitativas. And he's saying that he's going to talk about the way in which they are facing the, the lockdown uh, uh, in a, for continuing the classes. ...de marcos de aplicación. Eh, dejamos de lado un poco el solamente enviar PDFs por Google Drive, leerlos y después enviar un control de lectura. Mm -hmm. Estamos con... Every, every one of them are talking about the same. He says that it's not one more PDF that I need to read because I I, I, I can make the annotation itself. No? Entonces, de que eso no nos sirve ahora. Mm -hmm. Para ello hemos usado pues dos plataformas en línea. Una de ellas. Okay. Then, let me. Hola, ¿qué tal? Eh, mi nombre es Gustavo Sánchez Mora. Eh, les quiero contar que el día de hoy en la clase, en primera clase en línea con la maestra Rogel, pues vimos principalmente vuestra aplicación de hipótesis, eh, las que nos, nos va a ayudar no solamente a, a que los profesores nos den las lecturas, las imprimamos, subrayamos y transcribamos el texto, como si llevan en otras materias o e inclusive, e inclusive, pues con... con <laughs> and he's talking exactly about the same, no? That, that this is different, uh, the way in which they are facing this. And can you see all of them, all of them share wow. <laughs> they a lot, no? Yeah. Their, their experiences, no? Some of them are so, so um, I don't know, um, um, fun, and uh, others are, I don't know, joking, or one of them take a, no, I, I don't know if in this one, no? Take a guitar and start to, to play the guitar and you know and making like a song no <laughs> just, they are they are so crazy and uh in this part you can see let me show now the um understand um, oh here um and this is a um, um um a blog that uh, we have for the class and in this part the students make some uh I don't know, um, post about uh, about hypothesis, no? And they are, they, and he says uh, uh, that uh, this um, tool uh, help us to learn and uh, how to face uh, the COVID with this. And uh, <laughs> no, uh, if you are not new, no, uh, you, you <laughs> just, uh, they are talking about the past, no? The me in the past, uh, uh, is not going to use again the photocopies and the, no? And this is, es lo de hoy. This is a, a I don't know, a slang that you say in Spanish or at right. least in Mexico. Es sure. lo de hoy. It's something that you need to use now. And right. this, another one, uh, um, they are explaining, no? If we are ready to use these kind of, uh, of tools and in, in, in this part, they are criticizing the professors that uh, uh, 
can don't want to use this kind of uh, resources and whatever, whatever, no? And I, I share this with you. And I share, I don't know, there's a lot of tools, but I, I, I share the links there. Yeah. It's great. I'm, I'm so happy to see that actually, because um, it's so rare that we actually get to hear actual student voices at gatherings like this. Yeah, we try, we try our best to bring students into the fold, and it's, it's really <laughs> hard because, of course, what's in it for them, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I was so, I don't know if you managed to catch um, the keynote with Manuel and Frida. Uh, it was uh, that was yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in trouble remembering all the days. You, you don't know which day is today. Yeah, I, I've forgotten which day it is. But um, no, I think Frida was the. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, she was. She was a former student mm -hmm. uh, of of um, of Manuel's, and so uh, you know she still had that. She still had the student perspective. <laughs> it was really good to hear that. Um, uh, I. Uh, I, we've still got some a little bit of time here, and I know that there's one topic sort of looming in the background that we might want to talk about, because I know Rosario and I have talked about it quite a bit, and Federico may have his thoughts as well. And that's um, this sort of circling around something that Diego um, put into the, the question and answers here around um, hypothesis translation. And by that, I think we mean translations for the user experience elements of hypothesis, right? Um, because obviously a text can be any in any language and an annotation can be in any language. So it's just only the user the sort of chrome around that is the part that might need translation. Um, and then improving mobile support, which is in a way a whole nother topic, right? <laughs> um, and I'll just preface it by saying, because what I'd really like to do is hear your thoughts on this. I'll preface it by saying that First of all, a little bit of a caveat. You know, we're an incredibly small team at Hypothesis, and so we're not always able to do everything that's a brilliant and great idea all at the same time. Um, so uh, that's a little by way of just admitting that I think there's a lot of work to do here, and we haven't done it all yet. Um, so, for instance, just the way that the Hypothesis application is constructed it isn't built in a way that makes for easy internationalization or localization already, which is that's our bad, actually. It should have been designed that way from the, from the ground up, and it wasn't. And so we're going to have to, at some point, really take that on and 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 retool it. Then it can become a situation that you see in other open source projects where it's very easy for other people to provide translations into almost any other language, right, by providing simple translation files, which almost I've even done it. I mean, you, you don't even have to be a technical person to provide those, right, because you're just going in and kind of presenting alternatives for all the words that exist in the user interface. So I'll just have to say that, you know, that's a ways off. There's some other fish that we need to fry before that, to use an expression that's common in English, at least. Um, I don't know, do, the, do you do you have the, a similar expression like that in Italian, Federico? To, uh, we have other fish to fry. I don't know if you know that one. Uh, yeah, I've heard it before. No, we talk about potatoes. I oh, potatoes. About potatoes <laughs> for my, in my hands. <laughs> And in Spanish, Rosario, is there a, we have other fish to fry, if you know that saying? No, uh, in, in Spanish, um, son papas fritas. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Same thing, right? Well, yeah. we can thank the Americas uh, for, for potatoes to begin with, right? Because they're, uh, they are uh, uh, indigenous, mm -hmm. indigenous to the American. Yes, but American. here in Mexico, we prefer the enchiladas. Yeah, <laughs> always, always. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I'm always impressed when I think about all the fruits and vegetables that are native to the Americas and how intrinsic they are to a cuisine like Italy's, and yet they didn't even get them until after <laughs> there was yeah. the colonial experience. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> um, and so I just kind of, um, and I know, Rosario, you've done so much great work in helping to provide guidance in Spanish for hypothesis, which is outside the user experience, right? This, this question of what guidance could possibly be provided in other languages. And we've wrestled with that issue as well. And I know you and I have gone back and forth about it a little bit because um, we end up producing new guidance. And then as soon as, if we're gonna go through a translation process, then that would create extra work as, as new guidance and, and revised guidance goes out the door. And you of course generously offered uh, folks that might be willing to help with that as well. So yeah. you're, you're solving problems more than you're creating them, that's for sure. Yeah, no, I was thinking not on me, but on uh, some students that uh, can help because they are really happy with the using of, of, of this platform. And uh, I don't know, I, I'm, I do believe that if um, 
uh, you can offer uh, some resources uh, or tutorials or the information in other languages um, uh, like no uh, Spanish. Probably there were much more people involved or interesting. Not 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 main, not not specifically in in uh, hypothesis, but they related with all the 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 social annotation um, I don't know ecosystem no, which mm -hmm. is so rich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Federica, did you did in working with your students was there the issue that of, the, of having the guidance all be in English, or did you butt your heads against that? Mm, I I mean at the beginning of the the Italian text, I made one brief half page of instructions about the basic functions of a hypothesis, but I think they didn't have any issue in taking up how to use that. It was uh, some some of them even posted videos. I, I just put like three annotations as an example, one using tags, one using a video, so that they had an example of what they could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you used annotation itself as the kind of documentation? Yes, I did, but really just three, no more than that, and uh, that was enough. Yeah, no, but I think that the, the context of Europe is different in Latin America, because in Europe there are, I don't know, most of, m most of the people, they speak English as a second language. But in Latin America, this is not the case. In Latin America, most of the people speak Spanish or Portuguese in the case of uh, Brazil. Even we can uh, communicate pretty well with that uh, portuñol, no? <laughs> it's kind of uh, similar. Uh, but here in Latin America, there are very few people who English, um, I don't know, with some flu uh, uh, fluency, mm -hmm. then is really needed. To the, the, the information in Spanish because there are few people who speak English. That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, although I, I don't blame them for not speaking English because. <laughs> <laughs> no, important. no, no, but we can help, of course. Yeah. And I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that we can organize a, I don't know, a very nice and uh, fun group uh, interested in help uh, just uh, for collaborate. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. of that. Yes. Yeah one, <laughs> yeah, one thing that I was, um, I did a brief experiment of just looking at some of the um, hypothesis help guidance pages using Google Translate, what would quote unquote automatically translate the English into Spanish. And the Spanish translation actually seemed to be okay and had a few issues. But the real main issue was that, of course, we use images in some of our documentation uh -huh. and add English labels to the images. Mm -hmm. And so that, in addition to being kind of an accessibility issue um, mm -hmm. that we address through alt text, but then it becomes a translation issue as well because then yeah. you've got to make new images with different tags and so forth or, or do it in a completely different okay. way. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is an issue. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not even going to uh, really raise the uh, question of the of um, you know the, the mobile interface too deeply, but I did want to bring it up because one thing that I'm interested in is in the context that you guys were working in. Um, and I know Rosario mentioned this, um, that a lot of folks maybe are only have mobile devices in mm -hmm. which to encounter their teaching and learning experiences, right? And so I know that it's very challenging to use hypothesis on a mobile device as possible, but it's challenging. Um, did you did you run into that issue, Rosario, with your students? Yes, most, most uh, 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 all of them ask about the mobile application, <laughs> because um, as I told uh, you uh, uh, at the beginning, most of them uh, only um, I don't know continue their classes through the mobile. I don't know the, the phone or probably tablet, but no, because you know there's a complex situation. Some of them they have a lot of people at their ha house, no. Then probably they only have one computer, no, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the desktop, and then. I don't know, probably they are three or four uh, brothers and sisters and they need to, um, to, to, to share the devices. Because of that, they they wondering if uh, the, the mobile, mobile applications uh, could be used. And I said, no, <laughs> and they were so sad. <laughs> but OK, then I, uh, uh, of course, I think it's, um, I don't know, a challenge. And uh, if um, I may say, I, I think there's another big challenge and is related with the the job that is made by the editors, uh, journal editors, uh, in Latin America, because you know there are a lot of journals that are made probably with this um, electronic uh, um, uh, um, 
uh, uh, uses like a, a, a open uh, a journal system or this kind of things. But for example, open journal systems has an uh, um, I don't know an application in order to allow allow the the, um, the social annotations of, uh, of hypotheses. But if the editor don't uh, open or don't allow the, the, the annotation is not possible. Then there are a lot of journals in Latin America that could be annotated, but as the editor don't, doesn't know, the editors didn't know that this exists, they don't, they don't um, I don't know, active uh, or mm -hmm, put active. Mm -hmm. Activated, yeah. Activated this um this bottom, and because of that, it's not possible to annotate their journals. I think it's um I don't know. It's another. It's a challenge, but the it's not the challenge between professors and the, between students, but between between editors in order that they allow the annotations in their in their platforms. Yeah, and that's actually that's a really good point, and that's, I mean, we struggle with it all the time. Is trying to make annotation available in different contexts, right? Not forget about mobile desktop, just like different publications, right? To start with or different reading environments. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why we're forming this um, social learning across content um, coalition that Dan spoke about on, on in this Monday announcement, and there will be a panel about it tomorrow, is to try to bring the folks who kind of control the, all the publishing platforms together in order to get some sort of interoperability going so that annotation, regardless of what system is being used for it, is, is sort of available um, across more platforms. I'm sort of curious, Federico, maybe you have other things to riff on here too, but did your students get involved with the, the mobile versus desktop issue? Yes, I even included a question in my question to know about the device they were mostly using. And the majority of them were using the laptop or, or desktop computer all the time. Some of them reported to be using the mobile phone or a tablet. But um, I mean, I've tried it myself and uh, it's manageable. You can annotate in, on the mobile phone, but it's, uh, I think the most annoying thing is that it's covering the text completely once you want to annotate something. So not having the side-by-side -side text and uh, annotation, it's uh, maybe the, the the major drawbacks of this system at the moment yeah and i mean that's that's actually why we we really believe that probably some sort of native mobile app is only is going to be the only way to solve this because the user experience is going to have to be fundamentally different um, because of the small screen real estate like there's just no way that you know on this tiny screen that you yeah. can fit everything that you need to do to read and annotate and all together and so it's going to have to be it's going to have to be a little bit different. Um, and again, I'll throw this: we're a small team uh, excuse out there, but we haven't we haven't gotten there yet. I will I will say that it is possible, but boy, is it challenging. <laughs> <laughs> and it depends too on the browser you're using, on your mobile device, and so forth and so on. Um, well, I uh, I know that we're getting pretty close to the time that we're supposed to stop here at the top of the hour, which is only a term that I only learned in English very recently myself. It's when the hands on the clock. Yes. Both reach the top, or when the when the big hand reaches the top, I guess. Well, um, I wanted to congratulate you for the stamina and keep it going and until now. Yeah, I don't know yeah. for how many hours. Yes, it's well, a great, great work, and you must be uh, exhausted. <laughs> you know, actually, I'm enough of an extrovert that this kind of experience actually charges my battery, and so um, <laughs> okay. I may I may not be making any sense anymore, but I do I do I feel really good. Uh, so I appreciate that. I've also turned myself into black and white um, as a way to sort of bask by the bags under my eyes, maybe. But <laughs> I also, I don't love the way that I end up, because I'm the host, I appear in between you, like I'm separating you or something. And so um, I thought maybe it made me move it to the background a little bit more to be in black and white. Well, I don't know if it works or not. Um, well, I do, I really do, I, we don't have to leave right now, but we've just got a couple more minutes and I really wanted to, um, try to end on a graceful note here. And I was thinking, um, I know a lot of uh, different ideas and thoughts and so forth have passed back and forth. I really have appreciated both of you being being here, speaking really um, carefully about your practice, and then also giving some really clear examples about what's happened. And I'm wondering if, if as you leave us now, um, if anything new has come to you and you're thinking about social annotation as a result of participating in this panel. And so I'm, I'm throwing that out there, um, hoping that maybe something something new arose for you in this experience. And I don't know, Federico, did, did anything new happen for you here? New thoughts, new ideas? 
Yes, absolutely. I I knew about a few research about um, done in, in Mexico and and in Spain, but it's so great to hear more uh, from Rosario's research because I, actually I think uh, I mean there's a lot of work done in in the research. I mean I'm talking about what kind of research is done on on social annotation and social reading, and I think there's a lot done in in Spanish. I think there there were a few. Um, nationally funded projects, also internationally funded between Spain, Argentina, and, and Mexico. And, but of course, the problem is always the communication between the Anglophone world and, and the Spanish-speaking world. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. even though there is research um, about uh, English um, English speaking app, let's say, there's so much work done about the, the, the Spanish communities annotating text, which is not known. So I, I I'm, I'm trying to always quote the work from from Spanish speaking community when, when I in my work to make this known to to other researchers. Yeah, yeah, it, it feels like an iceberg situation, right? Where you know there's this tip of the iceberg um, showing above the water of what's happening, and then there's this huge mass of activity going on that Rosario is obviously more plugged into than I am, yeah. that I'm only just hearing about. So I'm totally with you on that, Federico. <laughs> How about you, Rosario? Are you taking away any new thoughts or ideas? No. Oh, well, first of all, uh, uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity to be here and to share the experiences that I have had uh, uh, using uh, the social annotation. And just saying that um, I'm so um, self, uh, uh, I don't know, confident. I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that it is kind of uh, uh, tools and the uh, social annotation and all this open open uh, uh, platforms uh, can be were uh, very well welcome in an environment like in Latin America because here in Latin America we have been a very I don't know active with the open access movement and with, and with the open science movement because it's, it's, it's really useful for us you know it's, it's uh, so powerful the way in which we have been working in this uh, um, in this environment and this in this ecosystem, and I think that in 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 this way, all the social annotation tools can um, I don't know contribute to uh, end the circle of production, consumption, and of course communication of uh, 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 in this case of scholarly scholarly communication in general. Then I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. I want to I don't know thanks and and, and I hope one day we can uh, be together in in a new face to face. No, not yes. only through a screen, <laughs> the screen of my computer. <laughs> For sure. Well, I uh, I'm a, a big fan of both um, Mexico City and Milan, so I I would jump at the come. chance. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> jump at the chance to come uh -huh. either place. Yeah, we can um, organize the next uh, I am take twenty. I don't know, 23 probably after the pandemic ends, no, here in Mexico. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. I would love that. Uh, Mexico City is one of my favorite cities on earth, to be sure. Um, I haven't spent as much time in Milan, but I would love to. I would love to spend more time there. <laughs> You're officially invited. Yes, okay. of course. <laughs> we will make it happen at some point. Well, my uh, actually, on a personal note, my uh, my younger daughter is planning to attend college in um, Spain. So I spend, I plan to be spending more time both speaking Spanish and visiting Europe. So maybe it, both of those things will intersect and okay. we'll be able to do everything. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, let's, let's go ahead and bring it to an end here. Um, and I, again, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate your joining.